Oh, welcome in to a daily editorial here on the KE Report, chatting with Jordan Royburn, founder and editor of The Daily Gold. Jordan, I want to start off by discussing the moves that we're seeing in the precious metals today and the precious metals stocks. This is starting to become quite the trend that you and I are talking about, where gold is its flat today, sitting right around 1505. It's had a little bit of volatility today, but overall just hanging right at and slightly above that 1500 number. But then we look over at the stocks and some of the ETFs like GDX, GDXJ, and those are down over a percent right now. GDXJ was just down about a percent and a half. So even with the metals price staying resilient and strong above 1500, even though some days it drops slightly below there, we're seeing the stocks again and just not have that same sort of stability. I know we've talked about it before, but what's some of the action today just further driving home to you? Now we're in a correction. That's not going to change, you, even despite the news of the Fed basically restarting QE, as they said there, this isn't QE. Um, yeah, we're, yeah, we're in a correction. And when you're in a correction in precious metals, uh, normally gold holds up the best and that's what we're seeing i mean even silver's up today a little bit but when i look at the silver stocks i'm looking at sil uh that has a, a clear bearish candle today that's engulfing yesterday's strength and also um the uh, and sil the peak yesterday and today both came at the 20 and 50 day moving average so that's like a very short-term trend indicator those moving averages i should say uh so that looks like it's it's you know the the rally is over and we're seeing similar action in with respect to the candle similar action in GDX and GDXJ GDX is reverse it reversed today at its 50 day moving average GDXJ not strong enough to reach its 50 day moving average but we still have the bearish candle there so that just it, it, Corey it it tells us that we're still in a correction and this is going to continue and we know that again when you're in a correction in this sector, when the larger trend is up, because it, as it is, because we're still well above the 200-day moving average in whatever chart you're looking at, when that happens, uh, gold is usually the strongest component. So we can't take much solace out of the fact that gold's holding above 1,500. Uh, it's just the weakness in the the miners silver miners included, that's just telling us to that the metals are probably going to correct more at some point. So, you know, I know we have some uh, potential good news and it looks like the odds for a Fed rate cut are high. So that could happen. But look, the, the markets are a discounting mechanism. They look forward. They look ahead. And regardless of the news, uh, the action in, in the precious metal sector is telling us we're still in, we'll, we are excuse me we're still in a correction and that there's plenty more time to go as far as this correction. Okay, and I think an important distinction to make is this is a correction still in a longer term upward trend. So we are still longer term bullish, but you're just saying that at least short term we could go through a bit more of a correction. What about the odds though of more of a consolidation, at least in terms of the gold price, rather than correcting, say, down to fourteen fifty or even fourteen hundred? Could gold just kind of hang around these current levels, maybe in that range between about 1550 down to 1480 ish? It's possible. I mean, in that scenario, what I would want to see happen first is look at GDX and GDXJ, and we would want to see them come down to the lows that they made a week or two ago, uh, just above 26 for GDX and just around 36 for GDXJ. We would want to see those ETFs come down and then bounce like really strongly off those current lows. And if that happens um, and they, you know, rally back up to even a little bit above where they are now, then that would tell me that there's a, a chance that this could turn into a real tight bullish consolidation. And if that were to happen, then that would, I guess, raise the odds that maybe gold's not going to go down and test 1420 or 1400 but uh, we're still it's still early though because if you look at where gdx peaked right at the beginning of september i mean it's only been correcting for a month 
And that's, you know, a lot of times in bull markets, you can have corrections and consolidations uh, that last six months, nine months, or even 12 months. I'm not predicting this is going to happen. Uh, this is going to last that long. But it's just something to keep in mind. You know, a one-month correction is really not that significant. So, I mean, with respect to how this is going to play out, um, you know, I don't necessarily see that much more or huge downside in terms of price because GDX did get down into the 26 area. And I mean, I'm looking at strong support at 24 and 25. So that's not that much more uh, potential downside. But I think to, to answer your question, even if GDX comes down and tests that level, and even if GDXJ were to come down and test you know, 34 ish, you know, after that point, we could still see a consolidation in the sector for several months. So in other words, you know, corrections are a function of time and price. So we could be seeing the price component happen at the beginning of this correction. And if we were to test those levels and rebound pretty solidly, you know, then after that point, you could see the correction play out, but in terms of time, and that's the consolidation that you're talking about. All right. Now, Jordan, you even mentioned the Fed statement or Powell's comments yesterday on uh, expanding the balance sheet, but not calling it QE, which is a bit confusing because that does sound very much like QE. Either way, though, injecting money into the system while also balancing out either cutting rates or not cutting rates at the next meeting. However, I think the rate cut odds are somewhere around 70 to 75 percent. So that is, for the most part, priced in. What's a bigger driver in your eyes for the precious metals? Is it rate cuts? Is it QE? Or is it a combination of both that could drive gold to, well, who knows what level? It's really rate cuts because rate cuts impact real interest rates, which is the number one driver of precious metals. So with respect to QE, I mean, QE could be, the scenario it would be bullish would be if it's financing deficit spending and we see, if, if we see a real economic downturn and the Fed has to figure out how to get money into the economy and get inflation going up, you know, obviously QE, putting, doing QE and helping financial markets is, not going to help. So they would look to use QE to finance deficit spending and get money into the economy that way. So I think at some point in the future, that's likely to happen and QE will be, uh, it, in that scenario, it would be directly bullish because it would be impacting inflation in the economy. But here and now, it's really the key is really Fed policy because you know if they cut aggressively, um, that's going to mean lower real interest rates. However, if they cut this month, but then they go on hold for like six or eight months, you could you could just c c continue to see, a, a, I guess, a consolidation in the sector, uh, you know, until they resume cutting again, or um, until they get inflation really running a lot hotter. Yeah, QE does not here and now it's really is not going to have that much of an impact on the sector. I mean, yeah, we did see a nice rally yesterday, but look what we see today. You know, we basically see the market reversing course and looking like it's going to resume this little correction. Yeah, it's one of these things where you can see kind of these longer term drivers all lining up. And that's one of the reasons why I think we did see that breakout in especially the gold price. But these drivers are taking some time, right? We're not seeing the Fed just go all in on rate cuts. And they're even trying to, again, reclassify a balance ex or a balance sheet expansion as something other than QE. All these things, it seems like will really come to the forefront. But it's all about time and waiting for this process to happen. Plus, overall, let's just recap what we've already seen this year in terms of, say, gold or even GDX. GDX year to date is up about 30 percent. Well, gold this year, that has moved a few hundred dollars. Actually, gold just this year is up about one hundred and fifty dollars, just over one hundred and fifty dollars. So already it's been a good year. Jordan, can you kind of recap taking into account what's happened in the first three quarters and what that means? means for kind of the overall picture, even if, say, we just move sideways for the rest of the year? 
Sure. Well, obviously, you know, this is something we've been talking about even since early or, or the middle of 2018. Corey, we're talking about how the key will be when the Fed starts cutting rates again. And that's basically exactly what happened. Even when the Fed, after the, uh, the gold stocks bottom like a month or two before the last hike in December 18. And, you know, they had a nice rally after that. Then they gave back not all but some of that rally. And then they really got going again once the Fed started, uh, did its first rate cut. Now, technically, if we look at gold, it obviously had the major breakout through that resistance. And now it's just, it's correcting and consolidating that, uh, that breakout. And it's going to take time. I mean, this is something that I don't know if this correction is going to last 12 months, four months, six months, seven months. I, I really don't know, but I, I, I don't think it's only a one month correction. Like I was saying before, so, I mean, nothing is out of the or nothing that's happening here is out of the ordinary, Corey. Uh, gold, it, it had the breakout. It got up to the strong resistance at 1550. Um, you know, a, a retest of 1400 or even 1380 would be totally fine. It would be totally within the realm uh, of a long term uptrend. And fundamentally, you know, rate cuts are playing a big role. And Look, if the Fed pauses for a little while, we're probably going to see more of a correction or consolidation in gold, you know, into early next year. And, you know, whenever the Fed gives the signal that, you know, we're not just going to cut once, but we're going to cut two or three, four more times, that's probably when you're going to see gold bottom out, resume its uptrend towards 16, 17, 1800. And looking at the stocks, Corey, um, if we look at GDX, you know, the parent index of GDX is the NYSE ARCA Miners Index, which you can find by using dollar sign GDM on stock charts. And if you go back like uh, 25 years, the level that GDX got to, um, it's obviously resistance from 2016 to 2013. So we know that this is like six or seven year resistance. But if you look at a 25 year chart, like that, that's been a key level for over 20 years. It's not just been... A key level for three or six years. So this is so GDX reached a very significant resistance level beyond just three or six years. And so when you hit that level after a really strong move, you're going to correct and consolidate, and not just for a month or two. Again, it could last even six or seven or eight months. I don't know, but it's not going to last one or two months. So um, you know, to, to go back to what I said about gold, when when the Fed uh, assuming it's going to pause for a little while. After that, when they resume cuts and, and signal to the market that they're going to cut rates down to one or even below that, you know that's when you're going to see gold resume its uptrend. That's when you're going to see GDX uh, head up towards this resistance and have a massive breakout. And you know that's when you're going to see a bull market really get going in this sector. But again, you know this doesn't look like it's one or two months away. It's probably sometime next year. The way both fundamentals. And the charts are setting up. And in the meantime, Corey, you know, maybe we'll talk about this next week. But look, stock picking is key. You know, look for, you know, look for the best juniors out there, uh, you know, that have the potential to grow discoveries or make new discoveries. You know, look for uh, junior producers uh, that are having exploration success that can grow their production and try and get in at a good entry point. And if you get in at a good entry point and you pick the right stocks, you know, they're going to outperform the sector and even move ahead of this big you know, sector breakout that we're talking about for next year. All right. That's something that maybe you and I will chat about next week is some of the characteristics that you look for in stocks and maybe even a couple stocks that have our eye that are doing the right work to hopefully outperform the market. Well, really at any time. Jordan, great chatting with you. Thanks for sharing some of your insights on the charts. Have a great rest of your week.